Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at shear flow weld design, specifically for wide flanges. This is a new calculation that we just released, so we're uh, excited to kind of jump into this one and do a design example for it. So, when we're, when we're looking at shear flow weld design, right, um, we're talking about uh, usually like a built up section um, or something where we need to weld uh, plates together or connect plates together to create a you know, composite section to make sure that the sections act together. So, uh, for this particular uh, design, right, we're looking at a built up wide flange. Um, and so, we'll be using AISC 360 uh, Chapter J2 for the weld capacities. And then, in order to determine the demand on these welds, we'll, we'll be using shear flow demand, uh, or small q there. So that equals VQ over I, where V is the shear demand um, along the beam. So if you have you know different loading, um, whatever that shear force is, that vertical shear force in the beam, um, is going to be what we're going to be using for the shear flow. Um, the Q, which is our first moment of area, we'll talk about that in a second, and then I, which is moment of inertia of the entire section. So this is what the shear flow diagram look like, looks like for a wide flange. Um, most of that shear is taken in through the web there. And then the first moment of area, right, that is, um, it, it's basically uh, the area above the section of interest. So our section of interest is going to be right here where this weld is. So it's the area above the section of interest uh, multiplied by the distance to the centroid of the entire section. So uh, we will talk about that uh, when we get to CalcBook and look at the calculations for that. And then our overall um, shear uh, stress in the section. So let's take a look at our problem statement. Um, we have uh, our built-up wide flange here uh, with a total depth of 14 inches, a uh, web thickness of 0.75 inches, a flange width of 8 inches, and then a flange thickness of 1 inch. Our loading uh, right from our, our shear diagram uh, of our beam is going to be a dead load of 55 kips and a live load of 25 kips. And we are going to be determining what the minimum fillet weld size is we can use um, based on the LRFD design method. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now, so we can go ahead and jump into our steel design module. We can use the 15th or the 16th edition, but we'll go ahead and use the 15th edition. Um, we'll select our connection designs, and then you notice we've revised this layout a little bit um, just to uh, sort of uh, simplify and, and, and sort out the different types of connections that we offer. So we'll go click into our welded uh, catalog here, scroll down, and we have this new design here for shear flow. So we'll go ahead and click on that, and we're going to be using the US customary units. So we'll click Continue. Okay, so we've got our module open now. Uh, so let's go ahead and start opening or uh, adjusting our profile geometry here. Our total depth is going to be 14 inches. Our flange width is uh, 8 inches. Our flange thickness is 1 inch. And then our web thickness is 0 0.75 inches. Uh, we'll just start with a quarter inch here and see where we land. And then we can, can come back and adjust it as needed. Um, so let's go ahead and enter in our demands. So we're going to be using ASC 716 load combinations. Our dead load, uh, remember we have a vertical shear of 55 kips dead and then a vertical shear of uh, 25 kips for live load. Um, so you can see we are okay right now with a DC ratio of 0 0.63. So let's take a look at our calculations first and then we can come back and adjust our weld thickness um, to, uh, to optimize the design. So uh, our vertical shear, right, our applied shear is just going to be the 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live of 106 kips. And then we need to calculate the demand on the throat, right? So we need to actually calculate that shear flow. So the first thing we do is calculate that big Q at right, the first moment of area, which is, remember, the, the area of the section um, just above the area of interest. So our area of interest is right here where this weld is. So we have the um, width of the flange times the thickness of the flange, and then the depth to the centroid or the distance to the centroid uh, of that section. So just D over 2, um, which is the overall depth, and then we subtract off the th half the thickness of the flange to get to the centroid uh, of that flange. And then we calculate the moment of inertia, right? This is just the sort of abbreviated moment of inertia for a, a wide flange shape or an I section shape. And then from there, we can calculate our VQ over I, right? So we calculate that, we get a, a little Q of 7 kips per inch, which is our required shear demand. So we have 7.02 kips per inch of shear demand, right? And then we can uh, go ahead and check our capacity. Right, remember we have two fillet welds. We're going to multiply um, our uh, our fillet weld by two, and uh, that gives us a total area of 0 
Um, then we go through and calculate our uh, nominal shear strength per linear unit or per inch in this case, which is 14.85 kits per inch. Uh, apply our fee factor. And so we have a total uh, uh, design weld shear strength of 11.14 kits per inch. So we still have some so capacity here. So we can go ahead and optimize a little bit. We can go down to 3 16 That's 0.84. Uh, an eighth weld that's over so let's go back up to a 3 16th so it looks like minimum we need a 3 16th inch weld uh, fillet weld uh, top and bottom there uh, of that wide built up wide flange so that is shear flow design in calc book we guys we hope you guys enjoyed the video please let us know in the comments below if you have any questions or if there's any other designs or calculations you want to see we'd love to hear from you otherwise we'll see you next time